Ah, hi there, everybody. Good evening, and thank you for joining in. I am Navaz Modi Singhania of the Body Art Fitness Centers, and it is lovely to see all you guys coming in. Thank you for joining. So at uh, Body Art, it's always been about, of course, the body, uh, but it's very holistic fitness. It is about the mind, it is about the soul, it is about the psyche, it is about your emotional well-being because, hey, you can't separate one from the other, right? So that has always been our view. And now, in these pandemic times, more than ever, for obvious reasons. And uh, in that endeavor, I am delighted to be having in a very, very special guest today with us that I'd like to introduce to you before I invite her in. I want to say a hello to, oh my gosh, all you guys I'm seeing coming in. Uh, Siraj, um, Yuvraj, uh, I'm seeing so many IDs coming in. Uh, um, Judith, Jagdish, Avi, Riddhi, Rinki, hi everybody and tons more that I'm um, not going to be able to mention because of shortage of time, but love that y'all are here. Please feel free to interact with us. Tell us what's on your mind as we go forward. So our guest for today is Dr. Sangeeta Shah, and she is the founder of the Sesta Holistic Healing Studio. Uh, she's a very versatile and experienced healer with over 20 years of experience in the line of alternate healing and energy therapy. She has learned Theta Healing from no less than its founder, Viana Stibal, and past life regression from the very legendary, very impressive leading authority, Dr. Brian Weiss. Yes, the very famous author, uh, most famous, I think, for his book, Many Lives, Many Masters, just to name a few. Today, uh, Sangeeta is a Theta Healing Master, a past life regression teacher and practitioner. She is the founder of the Balanced Emotional Empowerment Technique, the Applied uh, Hypnosis. She's there as a teacher and as a practitioner. Her very warm, open, uh, non-judgmental demeanor uh, makes her very easy to talk to and to trust. And those are two very important qualities, paramount actually, in this kind of healing. In addition to being an excellent therapist, Sangeeta is also an excellent teacher. Our classes are full of case studies which make the topic come alive uh, for all her students. So it makes it very real. And she truly goes above and beyond in order to curate and develop the sort of material that's required and the sort of techniques which make it easy for her students to practice, to apply to everyday life uh, in all that she teaches them. Her life's work is really to empower individuals to create a better, balanced society, which is well-tuned <clears throat> with a harmonious mind, body, and soul. What better? She follows very simple principles, and one of them is, hey, people spend a large amount of their time, their effort, their energy um, towards physical endeavors, detoxifying imp the body, improving the body, curing the body, maybe through diet, maybe through exercise, uh, or medication, or other methodologies. However, what about the huge buildup 
uh, of emotional toxins, of emotional baggage. Uh, it is almost never considered, even though research has um, strongly indicated a direct link in emotional state and your health. What goes on up there maps out to what goes on everywhere else, not only down there in our physical state, but in all of our lives, and we'll come to that shortly. So Sangeeta strives to help people, Sesta, uh, her premier uh, holistic healing institute, um, one of the most premier ones in India, uh, strives to help people, not just releasing these sort of emotions, but to maintain balance and also teaches them the techniques to do so, hence making them self-reliant and empowering them forever. Um, Sesters, therapists and teachers are trained in several very impressive modalities, including but not limited to Theta Healing, which they teach 16, yes, yeah, 16 different levels of, but also hypnotherapy, past life regression, and balanced emotional empowerment. Since no one modality is perfect and no two people are alike, the holistic approach ensures that therapists and teachers can provide the best experience to anyone that they serve. So without much ado now, I'd really like to invite um, Sangeeta in to join us. I have more to tell you about our own personal journey, but let's have her in with us for that very special part of it. So I will start while she joins. Oh, yeah, there you are. Hey, Sangeeta. Hi, Navaz. How are you? Very well, and I hope you're doing well. I'm good. I'm good. Thank First you. of all, uh, thank you so much for inviting me on your platform. Not and at all. Thank you for being here. So happy to see that uh, your approach towards health is not just physical, but emotional, mental, <laughs> like a very holistic <laughs> approach. It has to be. We cannot separate one's physicality yes. from the rest of it all. That's just so... Um, missing the forest for the trees. Absolutely. So, I was introducing you to our audience, and we have a very excited audience who's very eager, as am I, to listen to what you have to say. I'd like to talk a little bit more about your own personal journey before we actually get into the session. Uh, and I thought, nice to have you here to listen into your own personal journey. So, here we go. Um, so, Sangeeta, um, has a very interesting uh, past um, in terms of she used to suffer severe health issues such as migraines, intestinal issues, many other physical complaints as well, um, which uh, medicine could not manage, could not take care of. And uh, she tried a variety of things, uh, looking for answers. She started her journey in holistic healing um, by joining Vipassana, the art of living, uh, rhythmic breathing, naturopathy, a variety of other things, um, and then moved to hypnotherapy, theta healing, and past life regression, and more. As she moved ahead, studying further about the beautiful science of opening up the doors of the very powerful subconscious mind and uh, breaking the filter of consciousness that has created those physical conditions, her life changed completely. And happily, our lives started to change completely as she brought them to the world. Um, it is very rightly said that we are all born with a divine life plan, with a goal. And if we choose to walk on our life path, it's all harmonious. It's very easy. 
Uh, but if we do not, the universe has a way of conspiring against us and it will ensure that we follow our life plan. And isn't that a wonderful thing? To not forget what we really came in here for and to, um, yes, find success in uh, the very reason for our existence. So, uh, Sangeeta, I'd like to start by asking you. So, um, it's, it's well known, it's well said, it's well appreciated that the most important relationship that you will ever have is the one that you will have with yourself. So, my question to you is, do you think that you can have a good, healthy, sound relationship with the people in your life, uh, with your family, with your spouse, your children, your friends, uh, your colleagues, your neighbors, acquaintances, whoever, um, etc. If you don't actually have a good sense of self and a healthy bout of uh, self-esteem and um, yes, if you're not sound in yourself, what is your take on that? So Nawaz, if we really look at life and uh, what we create out of our life, it is absolutely a mirror reflection of what we truly believe who we are. So my experiences sets number of beliefs for me. And how, when I say experiences, what I meant is how I perceive those experiences. Because it is not about our experience being good or bad. It is about the perceptions, whether we considered as good or bad. And if there is not a strong sense of self, then that would, no matter what, what you project, it will reflect into every reality of yours, every relationship of yours. Majority of the time when we take cases, the first thing what we require to set correct for people is to bring back their self-esteem, their awareness of the self, the self-love is the key. Whether it's your relationship with your spouse, it is with your parents, it's with your siblings, at workplace, your neighbors, authority, anywhere. So it is not at all possible because if I do not know how to love myself, it's my element. The element of the soul is love. So what I am, I can give only that energy to people. If I do not love myself, it's a myth and illusion that I actually think that my relationship has the foundation of love, honor, respect. And uh, there is no getting past that, is there? <laughs> no, there is no getting past that. It is asking that uh, if in the morning the sun comes and says that, can I get away without having the light? of my own and can I without having the light can I shine or the water say that so you it is your element it is the foundation and we each one the earlier and the faster we get to know and we work on repairing or recreating that foundation back into us we actually recreate our life because that's who we truly are right um, it is, uh, thank you, Sangeeta. Uh, it's widely accepted now uh, with increased awareness that everything in our lives um, is actually seeded in our childhood. Um, be it how we were treated, uh, how we were made to feel about ourselves, whether we felt loved, whether we felt respected, whether we felt heard, whether we felt valued, all of that uh, is mapped out completely uh, into our adulthood years. And how we feel, therefore, about ourselves uh, plays out totally in our adult lives, in all of our relationships, sparing none, uh, in our life choices even, 
Um, and uh, could you could you share your views on that? Oh, thank you so much for asking this question, Nawaz, because I think the viewers will uh, benefit a lot. So last twenty years has uh, taught me one thing very very clearly. that no matter what problem we are facing in our present the root cause if i have to identify where is that coming from and if i want to remove it from the root the roots lie always and always in our first 8 years the primitive years when we are operating more out of the subconscious mind and majority time it has been said that 90% problem even comes from your womb memory how you felt yes i said you heard correctly when you are in your mother's womb how oh. you felt at that time mm -hmm. so very shortly i would like to share one story which is a life story of one of my client so this boy came to me is 11 year old and with born with the very difficult genetic disorder his body from the birth couldn't produce cortisol and the body requires cortisol for every action he was in icu unit for 11 months and doctor took 3 years to diagnose his case and when i started working on him i was working on the mother for the child that's what we call something called proxy work while working when we said that although i really don't know why my body doesn't produce cortisol what is the root cause the mother went back through the womb memory and she said i am in my mother's womb so i asked so what's happening and she said i'm very very hungry so when she said it is basically that child saying through her that i'm very hungry and i was like so what happens next she said my mother doesn't give me food she gives food to my grandparents first now it is our indian uh, sanskar that a daughter in law would first feed mm -hmm. the in law mm -hmm. so i just happened to ask that how does that make you feel mm -hmm. because how you feel emotionally impacts your organs and she just said that makes me feel so unloved so unwanted i have decided when i come out in this world my parents 100% attention will be only and only on me and that was the root cause like something as simple as when your mother has not eaten food when she was pregnant and she felt hungry and i was completely shocked and shattered that can such a small thing impact a human body so big time that even now every month he has to go for a blood test and injection and when we started healing those emotions when through theta we changed the genetic as we witnessed the first medical miracle happening and his body started producing cortisol so your childhood has complete grip over your present to make your present and future better we require many times to relook at our childhood memories how we felt at that time not how we were being treated because again i am mentioning it's our perception of what i felt and not a reality Hmm. That's a very powerful story, and it's triggered a couple of powerful memories uh, for me in similar ways. Yeah, um, I just wanted to share from what you said that when I was pregnant with my uh, daughter, um, I had a very difficult pregnancy, and uh, there were many times where she could not have made it, perhaps. and uh, there was a lot of bleeding and a lot of bed resting and it was just a very up and down situation and i had to take a lot of uh, shots a lot of progesterone and other shots to help my body not get rid of the pregnancy hold on to the pregnancy um and many many shots even directly in the stomach uh to the point where i 
started giving them to myself because now where every day you don't want to bother doctors and nurses and whatever. I said it's such a routine. I do it. I give it to myself, uh, and I am very medically inclined anyway. That was it. My daughter never knew about it, but she is paranoid of injections. She she says if I ever have to give even a blood test, I would rather die instead. Yeah. So probably so, somehow it registered on her that this was what was happening. It wasn't happening to her. It was happening to me. But somehow this is very powerful. No, it's very very important that. Uh, we go back to that memory and release the trauma from the child mm. and not only from the child even from the mother because you were not happy to inject yourself you know and that the sadness or the helplessness that you experienced during that time it it remains with the child even if for once if the parents even are discussing abortion for any reason they have discussed anything no matter how much you will love their shower to the child this child always feels being unloved or the rejection how do they and understand english <laughs> they understand the emotion so well that you will be absolutely shocked forget english uh, i think probably it's not the right thing on the relationship topic but i have worked because i do birthing programs also and two special kids which could communicate during the time they were in the womb and they could diagnose they could diagnose a medical problem in somebody else and they knew everything everything like i we were utterly shocked these Any were language, twins? they twins? they perfect english they they know so much they are so powerful that sometimes you think that we actually get them into the systems of learning and clear all the knowledge that they actually have and <laughs> i think one will actually take this topic and it's very interesting because we were shocked this child had given us everything when they are going to be born what time what would be the nakshatra what and like we were the detailing was so strong the name why they choose that what would be the birthing announcement what do they want in that oh and God. i could speak to that child in the womb and ask can you spell nawaz modi singhania for why she is having that and the child will anatomy physical anatomy the child will explain me so wow, wow. <laughs> i might ask you to do that sometime gosh wow thank you for that uh very powerful but um I, 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 I'm just wanting to say that firstly, we have so many people who are in out here with us: uh, Jagu, um, Abi, Ganju, Iso Zohe, Blata, Ritik. Hi, everyone. Amit, Parveen, um, Kapil, Saeed, Krishna, um, Chani, Nilesh. Prakash, Rana, Krishna, Chandra. I'm seeing a lot of you coming in. Um, Anil, Yuvraj. Hi, 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 everyone. Rahu, Ankit. I'm seeing all your questions on fitness, but today is about something else. So do put them up to me on a separate platform, Ankit. Uh, hi, um, Antonet. Uh, do put them up to me on a separate uh, platform, Ankit. Maybe. dm or something and we'll take care of those as well okay so let's get back to our very interesting conversation with uh, dr sangeeta shah um now these uh un, i'm going to say unacknowledged and undealt with childhood wounds because we, many people just don't want to acknowledge them um they color our adulthood completely we especially in my experience especially the men don't want to acknowledge that anything has ever been wrong um and they just kind of want to uh, you know just kind of um, sail through it um try and kind of hedge through it uh and i don't think that it really works why do they even do that why do they have this very avoidant attitude this very blocked kind of attitude what is that all about majority time uh, it is the fear 
fear of the unknown because something what i am not comfortable to deal with and i have an association of pain attached to that i feel i am not equipped enough to handle it i would rather avoid it or get into a defense mechanism and in a complete non acceptance of the same at the same time the second reason is majority time the mass consciousness programming so if you say man because we program them don't cry like a girl don't show your emotions as if they don't have a heart and that's why majority like the ratio between a man and a woman getting a heart attack the man has more because it has been programmed drilled into them that they can't express mm -hmm. so anything to deal with the emotions then there is a non acceptance and any emotions can be dealt with first when i acknowledge it and i accept that yes this happened now let me relook at it how to deal with it and so i i i think that's actually a wonderful attitude and approach to just block it get on with it stop being a cry baby and move on but the problem with that is it does not work it does not work so um uh yes yeah, so eventually you can keep pushing it under the carpet but it's not going away from there and it's yet having an impact on every area in your life regardless so it's kind of you know still um doing the damage uh anyway uh hi to the rest of you um tushar uh avijit ravi rohit aparna yogita hi rohit nitesh uh jinu anil uh ajit i'm seeing all you guys come in and love having you with us and thank you for your fabulous comments and taking a look at all of them and we'll take up your questions at the right time too um please jump in and ask um okay so going forward uh talk thank you for all of this now the fact that we want to block and we don't want to address and we think we can't deal with it and we think that boys are not allowed to cry and not allowed to you know say it as it is etc it just doesn't work so it's really important to still work through it and not try and just ignore it it never goes away um my question right now before we get into that is how severe is the problem is it even that these sort of unresolved issues um can get carried forward from a past life and can they even get carried forward into our future into like even the next life does that happen ah uh, yes it does so basically a subconscious mind doesn't understand what is coming to me which happened to me 5000 years before or it just happened to me 5 minutes before everything is stored as a particular imprint and our set of beliefs that we go on piling up we go on putting it in our subconscious mind it's like a programming the data entry that every night when you sleep you are putting it in mm. majority time what happens is that people create a pattern across time and space like when through different lifetimes when you observe their past life what you are going through in your present life is a particular pattern when mm -hmm. i say pattern for example somebody may have a very loving husband or a loving spouse but a very loving father but a very dominating one so mm. their way of expression is dominance so they will have every man in their life so every man will be father father in law whoever they are closely associated with husband son so it, it's a pattern there were times a uh, uh, very funny but like you know once when i was dealing with a client of mine and uh, she always she came with a problem with in her relationship and she came to learn all the classes with us and every lifetime she couldn't even get engaged or married so that the life that she resolved and got engaged she actually called for ice cream for everybody in the class and said finally i could manage 
that and it was such a shocking revelation that majority of them had the same pattern reflecting their present whether it's a pattern of abuse they have gone through whether it's a mental abuse sexual abuse physical abuse hmm. any physical problem the health issue was reflecting and coming from their past life and if we do not take in the learning in this reality in this present life the soul carries this memories in three soul molecules mm. so there are three soul molecules which carry memory life after life and that's why there are people who just uh, meet a person for the first time and then you feel suddenly a lot of love for them or anger or fear towards them where is it coming from mm. other phobias like some people have phobia of height some people have phobia of lizards or anything where are they coming from the deja vu that we experience so mm. we not only carry it from our past lives we carry it forward in our next realities and the same drama we continue with the same set of people if our soul has not chosen to learn it from them what they as a soul are teaching us and if we do not integrate that into our present we continue the same drama same pattern wow uh so the first and most important step then is obviously to understand this to accept it and uh, self realization is of course the best realization right <laughs> yeah and self learn so, as well yeah true true um okay so uh what would happen if you uh, avoid doing this what would avoid, what would happen if you just kind of continue this way and um our minds also under severe trauma tend to block a lot right tend to have a certain degree of uh, amnesia as a defense mechanism uh what happens if we say okay i've heard you but it's not working for me that can of worms i cannot open it i cannot deal with it and i am not sure i can get them all back in i don't want to leave it in a worse state than when i found it so uh then what the it continues and it will start showing impact on every aspect of your life so the best way to deal about it is even if you do not want to go deeper just the incident or the people who are triggering you you simply need to ask uh, what is my learning through it mm. what is it that i learn and where are they mirror reflecting me because mm. if i detach people from their behavior for example authority is the behavior which bothers me so rather than putting a name to the person if i detach and say this is the authority in this person or manipulation in this person bothers me that quality and what is this person teaching me or where am i mirror reflecting that manipulation or authority Hmm. what am i learning probably they are teaching you how to speak for yourself probably they are teaching you not to manipulate with your own self your own self esteem and the minute you put it to action you can move on and liberate um i'm not sure if the next question is going to uh, be a bit too scattered it probably will but just for our lay persons understanding uh what sort of methods uh, do you use very briefly in healing and uh, yeah could you just briefly explain yeah so the technique balanced emotional empowerment is something which is uh, a very very easy to use for a layman powerful tool which is i can say that my 20 years of or thousands of cases that i dealt with and really wanted people to have something as a tool which they can identify which helps so we call it a balanced emotional empowerment technique it reboots your energy systems very quickly 
and it simply you start talking about your problem while uh, simply putting your hands on the knees or the karate chop and uh, our time is point which is just for fingers down we like tap a chain changing it is changed and speak about the change and connect it with the breath it shows absolutely brilliant results almost instantaneously the we use theta healing a lot it's a very 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 powerful versatile very deep rooted meditational technique where whether it is the chemical imbalance the genetic work the genetic problem in the body whether it is activation of the dna strands whether it is identifying through kinesiology the limiting beliefs changing them connecting to our hearts to know our own purpose of life passing lots of love to the baby in the womb and when there are many many tools connected there in the theta healing and we normally put the icing on the cake using the hypno meditations because that's like a reprogramming so rather than using it majorly for as a diagnostic tool we use it and uh, for people like who want to like go through a past life regression or any regression obviously past life regression there are if you are still not your subconscious has still not got the right answer it will automatically take you back to that memory and being able to see it from a very observer's perspective so there are many tools now as but like these are majorly the tools which in combination to the b technique and theta healing along with applied hypnosis and regression sometimes mm. that is what like we use mm mm thank you and uh, of course different people different situations you would apply uh, depending on what the situation is i'm sure now again this is another scattered uh, question um but sorry for our lay person understanding one has to ask that of course it's, it depends on what the issue is and how deep it is and etc but still how long does one expect that healing can generally take place in okay so healing doesn't take time but it depends on how deep rooted your wound is is the same thing what happens physically if i come to you for exercise session and if i have a broken bone will you how long will you be able to take me to rebuild that like your first answer will be you right now required to go to an orthopedic right once you are fine once the bones are joined now probably it's a casting where but my body is healing the casting is not helping me to heal my body is healing casting is just helping me to keep it in place the same doesn't happen in our life with our emotions i cannot give you an emotional casting that nobody will come to trigger you again to mm. again fracture you emotionally <laughs> or again to mm. give that scar to you so the only way out for the healing is the healing from inside how strongly you coming back to your first question how strongly you believe in yourself will not make you vulnerable to let anyone else fracture you emotionally or anyone else wound you emotionally hmm. so there are times uh, people are uh, a young girl came with a 6.7 cm cyst in her ovaries and multiple cyst and this is a ct scan at 8 pm the mother called up that since she is just 18 year old and studies in boston the doctor has strongly recommended to get it done here because probably when she goes back and she gets pain they will not wait to call us and i said when is your next report mri and it was in the next year at 2 o'clock in the afternoon they came in the morning and i said let's see how her body responds we took session for 3 hours and there is one specific technique in theta healing we call heart song or an organ song where through a sound people release the emotional toxicity out we did that 3 hours with the downloads and lot of other stuff 
she went for an mri and there was absolutely no cyst which 8 pm had 6.7 cm cyst with multiple cyst wow and wow yeah it took 3 hours for her to come to that point of realization that my relationship with a person has created a cyst and the minute you release it the forgiveness everything it changed and there are times simple like acidity people take few months so the time depends on the clients how long it takes they can let it be instantaneous vaina herself healed her cancer instantly just simply with a command she didn't have any limiting belief her leg which had shrunk became normal instantly Ooh. i have healed my fracture instantly So, depends from person. <laughs> okay, and I, I suppose this also impacts stones, right? Uh, the in, formation in of stones. Uh, the formation of stones in the body. Sometimes you have yeah, yeah, yeah. So the bleed stones, stones or anything. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Even right. the stone. It, it's a block, right? Everything mm. we connect to, how emotionally it would be. What is something? The stone is a blockage. Mm. depending on the body part where exactly has it is it blocking you something which is like a stone which is not allowing you to move on mm hmm everything every problem that you mentioned wow um i am seeing so many others joining us from all over the world actually sandeep sharuk umesh Hi, Ila. I know there are tons of them I've seen coming in. I'm just naming them because I want to say a quick hello to you all. You're seen, you're heard. Uh, this is a session <laughs> concerning the same as well. Ram, Viraj, Hi, Aisha, Nisha, Shiv, Puri, um, Prakash, Rino, Ari. Hi, 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 all. Yashu, Javed, Shari, Vikram, um, Sunny. Ajay, Lakwinder, Kapil, Mohan, Chand, uh, Arjun, Rahul, Dylan, Tara. I wish I could say hi to everybody else out here as well, but then we'd never get on with our lives. So whoever I'm not able to personally say hi to, you know, you're very welcome and noticed and seen out here. And uh, hi everyone, Rupesh, Harsha, hi. Okay, so tell, uh, tell me, uh, we're coming to the close of our chat. Um, do tell me, Sangeeta, um, when you're healing, can the outcome be expected to be? Of course, much lies in the hands of the person who's who's being healed, their genuineness, their the work they put in, their openness, so on and so forth, and of course, the skill of the healer, um, the technique, the skill, so on and so forth. However, uh can one expect healing to happen to the point of 100% or uh, is it that we will end up living with some scars and carrying some crosses for the rest of our life anyway no healing can happen 100% there are many times you will feel that your life is completely transformed because i'm not claiming that the problem will stop coming into your life how you will handle this problem will completely change your outlook towards life will completely change because that unhealed part you have resolved and there is a sense of completeness within yourself mm -hmm. so not only that you feel physically but emotionally you are charged you are more expressive you are more in alignment with your soul's energy and with your purpose of life right. you tap into your own potential right uh thank you thank you and um sangeeta i know that you yourself were not uh, were uh, hi beverly lovely seeing you there um i know that uh, uh, sangeeta you were not very well today uh, just down with a throat issue i think you were um, chatting and healing too much and uh, therefore thank you particularly for doing this with us today uh you guys we've had a lot of questions from you please feel free to put them down we've not been able to answer as much as we would have liked to um but please feel free to put them down in the 
comment segment this uh, live is going to be up on uh, IGTV on um, uh, Instagram Instagram Facebook and YouTube and uh, probably Sangeeta's handles also uh, and I wanted to say that relationship issues really are um, the mainstay of uh, many of our many of our uh, uh, problems our strives etc and they reflect of us as well um, Sangeeta and I do plan on having um, further conversations on subjects she will talk to you about right now. Uh, we will keep you posted as they develop, so do watch this space. But Sangeeta, do you want to say a little bit about that? Sure. So relationship, uh, as we started that, you know, the relationship that we share with ourselves reflects on all our relationships. And majority people do have problem in the relationship dynamics. On our live chat, every day we do daily theta healing, regular meditations for people. And uh, we are done a poll on what problem do you want me to help you with? Finances, COVID was going on, your health, this, that. And I was shocked, majority said lack of expression and relationship. That was something which, because nobody teaches us how to handle them and what can be done about it. Mm -hmm. So I feel it is a good idea that if everyone can put in their question, we are here to serve you, we are here to help you. Please send your questions to us so that we can take your queries and help you how to move on beyond that feeling of stuck or stagnation that you might be experiencing in your relationship. Whether that's a relationship with your partner, whether that's a relationship at your workplace, that's a relationship that you share with yourself, the self-belief. And the minute we have it, that where are you facing problem, it will be easier for us to help you with that. So I think we will continue with the relationship for a season. So probably maybe two or three more episodes, Nawaz? Yes. Depending on what the people really want and they demand. And yes. we can even take one or two questions now if uh, specifically somebody has a real some question for today's topic. Yes, if you do, please uh, jump in, ask us what you'd like. Uh, I'm seeing other people come in. Arun, Yogita, hi. Um, Radhika, Nav, uh, Chetan, Ritu, uh, Ritu, sorry, Ride. Uh, I'd, I'd also like to add on to what Sangeeta said out here. You know, um, a healthy um, body is no good without a healthy mind. It's a life which is not worth living, honestly. And why would you live? under the veil of consciousness? Why would you not live your best life? Um, we need to be very careful, firstly, and mindful of the thoughts that we entertain, because that's going to make us very aware as to what is it that we're really feeling, and ensure that you accept your thoughts. Um, don't brush them aside and think, am I even wrong for thinking this? Are they not valid? Am I selfish for thinking this? Uh, am I too sensitive? No, your thoughts are 100% your reality. Um, and uh, there's a lot that stems from just that observation. So I just want to add that on. We look forward to your, in the comment segment, questions, your relationship issues. We all have them. Um, it, it may not be necessarily a childhood issue of yours, but there are people out there that are very damaged also that can come into our lives and have uh, the same devastating effect. So please jump in, have your say, because we put together our sessions going forward based on what it is that you really want and how we can end up serving you best. So look forward to that. In the meantime, thank you so much, Sangeeta. It's been fantastic. Um, it's going to be something a lot of us are going to go back to. Certainly I am to listen to again. Um, and uh, it's been of great value to everyone here. Um, so, yes, look forward to more with you in the future, and thank you again.
Thank you. Thank you so much, Nawal, for uh, inviting me. It was a great pleasure talking to you and uh, genuinely thoroughly enjoyed the session very much. Looking forward for a lot of more work together and uh, being able to serve all of them, what questions they have and healing relationships and healing ourselves, healing our wounds. Thank you. It's a very big one that I think uh, we don't talk about and therefore the problem is even bigger and therefore the help rendered is that much more valuable. So thank you once again and have a great rest of the Sunday. All you guys stay well, stay safe and we'll catch you on the next one. Till then. Bye. Bye. Thank you.